Hey everybody, it's Robin Maureen, the Stromats, coming at you again. This is gonna be called The Unshow. And we're coming at you from an undisclosed location. We're gonna share with you five unspoken tips and things that every RVer should know. And that's because we want you to understand exactly what it is to be an RVer. So here we go. Let's just get the shit out of the way and start with our number one tip. <laughs> you gotta dump. Oh my God, not me. I don't dump. I, that is not, well I have, yes. So everybody has to dump at some point. When you go into your RV dealer and it doesn't matter whether you are looking at a million dollar coach or a $25,000 van that you're gonna redo yourself, everybody has to deal with their shit once in a while that's just the way it is it kind of keeps us all humble doesn't it so there you have it <laughs> you got to deal with the dump what's next well number two and it's one that we, maybe we should have used that one for number two <laughs> <laughs> anyway, number two is eventually you are going to break down sad to say it's not a matter of if it is a matter of when and again it really doesn't matter whether you have got you know a $12 car that you're driving around in or a million dollar Prevost you're gonna find some trouble sometimes so you need to have a plan all right with that plan you want to make sure that you are prepared and that you've got some type of roadside assistance there are a bunch of programs out there. We personally use CoachNet. A lot of people use AAA RV. Good Sam's is out there, FMCA. Find out what works for you, what seems to be the best plan, and make sure you've got some roadside and some breakdown assistance. You also want to make sure that you've got a repair fund or a slush fund or a credit card or something to bail you out when that does happen. And the other thing to think about is you might need alternative transportation or alternative lodging. Sometimes these things are a little more than what we expect. And what are you gonna do? How are you gonna get to your next destination or to a destination to a hotel if you were to have to get one? So just a couple things to think about. So one of the things that we found out with our Renegade is how quick they are to diagnose and fix some of the issues that we've had. We've been very fortunate to be able to pull into a Freightliner dealer and have our rig diagnosed. Now we have 2018, we would think that there wouldn't be any issues. Well, guess what? With the amount of miles that we put on this baby, there are issues. Those wires cross, they rub, they break and they uh, will cause you some downtime. But with ours, we have been able to pull in, get diagnosed, and on the road the next day. So before we go into number three, we're going to take a real quick commercial break here and I'll let you know what we are sipping on tonight. Today is pretty warm out and you know we have been drinking tequila for a lot of videos. So tonight we thought we would mix it up and have a little mule out here on the deck this afternoon. I don't know, do you guys have these cool little uh, copper cups? They are fantastic. They keep everything ice cold. You can get them on Amazon. Um, in the notes, you can find a link to it. It is an affiliate link, which means we do make a small commission if you buy through that link, and we certainly do appreciate it. There's no extra charge to you. So if you're looking for some cool glassware, we have always got something to suggest to you, and hopefully you will enjoy a mule. A little bit of vodka, we use prairie vodka. A little bit of ginger beer, we use sugar-free ginger beer. And some lime in a nice copper cup. Cheers. There you have it. <laughs> so on to number three, Rob. What is that one? Share with us. Everybody has an opinion. And guess what? Opinions are not facts. They are just that, opinions and you need to analyze people's opinions based on your particular 
situation, not just general information. People want to know, are there campsites in Florida? Not a single one. <laughs> Has anybody ever driven to California from Oklahoma? Never. <laughs> so, <laughs> what kind of rig should I buy? $17 million double-decker coach mm -hmm. as long as a freight train, if you can afford it. Yeah, but that's not really camping, according to some people. <laughs> so, temper your opinions, or somebody else's opinion. Just kind of digest that as, is it an opinion? Is it fact? Is it based on anything other than somebody's wild idea? And how does that really relate to you? If you are a van life person, then a super C opinion really isn't gonna matter. We're getting ready to go west. Everybody's like, oh, there's plenty of BLM land. Well, yeah, if you've got a four wheel drive or you can go through ruts or you can do things like that, it's a little more restricted for bigger rigs like us. Mm -hmm. Not saying it's not there, it's just a little tighter, so we've got to do a little more research. We've got to be sure and not just accept somebody's opinion. Oh, yeah, just take off Memorial Day weekend <laughs> out west in Zion National Park. You can camp anywhere. Plenty of spots. Well, I'm not really sure about that. But on the other hand, people will tell you Memorial Day weekend out west, Zion National Park, you're never going to find a spot. Not anywhere. No, don't go. You can't go. You've got to book two years out. Well, that's somebody's opinion. Guess what, people? We booked it, we're going, we're only two weeks out. So I love to listen to people's opinions and I take them with a grain of salt. If we would have listened and followed people's opinions back in the day, would we have ever done anything that we have done in the last 20 years? Uh, no. Would we, we would have had a company? A... Would we have traveled to 49 states, bunches of countries and Gosh, almost everywhere in between. Nope. Would we have... <laughs> we won't even tell you some of the crazy things that we would have done if we would have listened to people's opinions rather than the facts. So do your fact finding and uh, take everybody's opinion with a grain of salt. They, they're coming from some place that might not be where you're coming from. <laughs> Sorry, we have a mosquito <laughs> floating around us. So next up, here's our opinion. Every day may not be a great day. What? Every what? day may not be a holiday. Although that's what Maureen really thought when I traveled a little bit before she traveled with me. Every right. day was a holiday. Right, right. Some days it's gonna rain on your parade. You're gonna have so much stuff planned and it's gonna be a monsoon out there. You might wake up and it be a snowstorm. And you might wake up and you have that call that you need to come home for something. Or it might be one of those days that... You're a little itchy. <laughs> no, you break down. Oh yeah. That yeah. will make a holiday a not so good day very quickly but those things happen yeah. and that's something you just need to know and you need to be ready for and some days it's not even it could be just an itchy day yeah and may uh, just wake up can't get on the wrong side of the bed in an rv because you can't <laughs> get in the bed <laughs> so uh, anyway that's one of the things that you need to consider and for our last tip oh this is one of my favorite tips. And again, when you are out there cruising the RV forums, you're gonna hear all kinds of opinions about this, why and why it shouldn't be. But not all Walmarts, Cracker Barrels, Cabela's, Lowe's, Home Depot's, or rest stops allow overnight parking. Please check the Bill of Rights. That is not listed in there. That is not one of the inalienable no. rights that we were guaranteed although most RVers truly believe that and become yeah. really offended when somebody tells them 
no, you can't park here for free. Oh, and churches. They, they like, the last thing I heard were uh, people were all bent out of shape because churches don't allow overnight parking for transients <laughs> like us. <laughs> Imagine that. I mean, come on. You got to understand and respect. Most of the time, it's because of either a zoning issue or their insurance issued due to the city or township or county that they are located in. Touristy towns, Daytona Beach, Orlando, just about anywhere in Florida, the closer you get to the water, Florida relies on their tourist industry. And if you are not paying for an overnight bed somewhere, whether it be an RV spot or a hotel, then you're not contributing to their economy. So be, be mindful of that. It's not necessarily Walmart. Maybe Walmart had trouble with a community. Well, I think that a lot of that also, it comes from those things that you've talked about, but a lot of the zoning, a lot of the laws that have been put in are because of abuses in the yeah. system because people roll in and do all kinds of unsightly things in oh those parking gosh. lots or think that's their permanent parking spot. And it's right. not, <laughs> it's not. This is called a courtesy, courtesy. a customer courtesy. courtesy. So spend some money in Walmart, be respectful. Ask, don't assume. What happens when we assume? Yep, it makes one of those. Big A, <laughs> double S, <laughs> however you do that, out of you and, and me. me. So that's that's it. There's your five unspoken stro tips right here for today. Take them and be a better RVer. If you want to know more, check us out on the stromads.com. Like this, share this, subscribe this, and we'll see you next time. Cheers.